On April 16th, back in 1943, LSD was discovered. Now, the moment you mention drugs, you open yourself to more cheap jokes than on any other subject except perhaps sex. But there's an important point to make here about historical causation because LSD will be forever associated in the popular mind with the 60s. Yet, it was discovered two decades earlier. And this brings up the thought that very often you get the feeling that a particular historical epoch would not have been what it was without the presence of a person or a thing or an idea. But at the same time, the person, the thing or the idea wouldn't have been what it was without the historical period. Again, the 60s couldn't be the 60s without acid and LSD couldn't be acid without the 1960s. Uh, say, uh, Albert Hoffman actually isolated lysergic acid diethylamide 25 back in 1938. It wasn't until 1943 that he accidentally ingested some. It takes a very small dose to be effective and he went on the world's first acid trip without even knowing it, which I've often thought must be an alarming experience, though it can't have been too bad because he took some more later to see if that's what had caused his unusual experience back on April 16th, 1943. Yes, it was. But LSD didn't immediately become famous. It was a, a curiosity interesting only to a few medical researchers until you got the 1960s. And here the nature of the research that was being done on it intersected with larger social trends. You see, LSD has peculiar effects. Okay, ha ha ha, you knew that. And the hallucinations are famous, although when they're depicted on television or in comic books, they're usually ludicrously at odds with what users actually experience or what I'm told they experience. I grew up in the 1970s and there weren't any drugs anymore, so I wouldn't know. But I digress. The point is, the most potent effect of LSD is not visual, it's psychological. It has a tendency to break down barriers, established modes of thought. It's almost like becoming a child again, and very often those who take it are filled with childlike wonder. Again, it's easy to satirize. Man, I got four fingers. But it really does promote a fresh way of looking at things. And the thought was perhaps we can use it as therapy, say for alcoholics, to get them to see their life and their disease in a new way, fresh, vivid, unfiltered, and realize what's wrong with it, why it's happening, how to stop it. Also maybe hardened criminals, violent psychotics could be made to somehow to see what they don't see, the harm they do other people. Naturally enough, this got the attention of people like Timothy Leary and Ken Kesey in the 1960s who were interested not in psychological but in social change. The idea that something was radically wrong in the Western world, including particularly race relations, and they weren't wrong there, and that maybe this substance would help people see their society and themselves and their behavior in a whole new way and bring about social change. It's very different. You think about the 60s in LSD, the 70s in cocaine. Cocaine's not about achieving higher consciousness. It's just about having a good time in a world that doesn't mean very much. Different tone, different era. Now, apparently, people are starting to rediscover the pot potential therapeutic uses of LSD and other hallucinogens and treating patients with incurable diseases, cancer and others. Michael Pollan just wrote about this. Getting them to understand their situation from a broader perspective, to see how wonderful life is, even in adversity, even toward the end, to appreciate the power of love, to get a new perspective on their illness and their situation. But however that may turn out, it's likely that LSD will always be associated in the popular mind with the 1960s, which brings me back to this point about history, that without this particular peculiar powerful hallucinogenic drug with these particular effects, the 60s couldn't have been the 60s. But by the same token, without the 60s, LSD couldn't have been acid. So you see, sometimes what happens in a particular historical period marked by a particular person, thing, or idea is that you need the person, thing, or idea to make the era, but you also need the era to make the person, place, or thing. Thus, the discovery of LSD on April 16, 1943 led to the discovery of LSD in the 1960s.